Oh, jeez, dang it. How does this thing even bounce? Sounds like it's time for some science. Hello, I welcome you back to the Noggin non-official headquarters of gaming, or Nog for short. Haven't been here in what, like two or three years? Anyway, this is where we overanalyze various weapons and technology from the Halo universe. Remember Halo? We've talked about it before on this channel, and then Pokemon happened. But today, we are looking into the Fuel Rod Cannon. Or is it the Fuel Rod Gun? Well, it's the Covenant's version of the rocket launcher. This thing is very strange, as when it's fired, for a short time, it can actually bounce off of surfaces. This strange phenomenon happens in every Halo game, except for Halo 5, so we're actually going to have to take a trip back in time to analyze this weapon. Is the time machine ready, Scoopa? Excellent. Oh yes, time travel. Insert foreshadowing comment. Now, like with the other weapons we've covered, let's chart down the odd things the weapon does and then we'll solve each problem separately. It fires glowing green projectiles that explode. The question is, what is this green substance? Then, when it's fired, for a short time the projectiles can bounce off of any surface so long as they don't hit it head on. And finally, after that short time the projectile starts to emit sparks and now cannot bounce off of any surfaces. So. It is only mentioned once that the fuel rods are actually radioactive, by a marine who compared them to fuel rods in real life. The fuel rods do look very similar to plutonium rods, but since the fuel rod gun makes explosions like this, and plutonium makes explosions like this, well, a kilogram of plutonium can cause an explosion equivalent to 21,000 tons of TNT. So we can rule out plutonium as the green substance. But interestingly, the Covenant used this material for many of their weapons. The hunter cannons, the scarab beams, and of course the fuel rod guns. What makes the fuel rods different is that it uses cases, while the hunters and scarabs seem to just launch the raw material. Now check this out, in Halo Combat Evolved on the mission keys, the Covenant ship is leaking coolant all over the place, and you can see how thick the coolant is by how slowly it's running down the ship. And in the mission, Chief has to jump into the pool of coolant, and Cortana ensures him that it will cushion his fall. But with Chief being almost a thousand pounds, and the pool not being that deep, this doesn't seem accurate. Although Chief has survived falling from greater heights before. But still, he doesn't even get a scratch from this. So the coolant must be able to absorb impact very well for Chief to make this jump. And this stuff is green, the same green as the fuel rods in the original and remastered versions of the game. So it may also be our secret ingredient in the fuel rods, as it's the same color and can absorb impact really well, hence the bouncing. The coolant on its own isn't explosive, but maybe the Covenant combined it with acetone peroxide, nitroglycerin, or some other shock-sensitive elements to make it explode on direct impact. It's possible that once ignited, the coolant would burn up really fast and become a form of plasma. This would make sense for most of the Covenant's weaponry. Plasma pistols, rifles, hunter cannons, fuel rod guns, all having less explosive material in the less explosive weapons. From watching the scarabs beams, it seems like there's a bolt of electricity surrounded by this coolant. This bolt must emit some kind of electromagnetic field that would pull the coolant, assuming it's magnetic, towards it, making the iconic beams. This would also help keep the coolant stable inside of the fuel rods, using a magnetic field to prevent it from detonating until it impacts a target. So now onto the bouncing. The fuel rods that are fired have a peculiar shape with metal on both ends. What makes sense is that the cap on the front must hold the shock-sensitive material in it. So thus, when fired, the fuel rod is only explosive when hit directly, as the cap would detonate the fuel. When hit at an angle, however, the fuel rod would just bounce off, as the coolant is not yet mixed with the material. But still, after a short time, the shock-sensitive material would mix with the coolant, possibly causing a chemical reaction of sparks flying all around. And now that the chemicals are mixed, the fuel rod will explode when impacted from any angle. It's much more volatile. Notably, it is said that humans can't reproduce fuel rods without the help of engineers, who have the ability to manipulate pretty much anything. So maybe the inner workings of these rods are extremely precise, otherwise the thing just blows up in your face. But now, what about them being radioactive? It is possible that the marine who said that was just theorizing, but maybe the Covenant added some radioactive gas to make the weapon more deadly. In our real world, these would be called dirty bombs, which are just regular explosives, but they're combined with radioactive materials. The purpose of these weapons is to contaminate the blast zones for area denial and such. These fuel rods may be a form of slight dirty bomb, and this would explain the radioactive nature and the low blast power. 
but it could still use the coolant mix, but with just a touch of radiation. The same radiation that the Covenant Carbine uses, apparently. So, the plasma in plasma weaponry is actually some form of alien coolant, which then turns into plasma. Or maybe the other way around, maybe the coolant was made from plasma. Huh. Aliens, man. Now then, I gotta bounce back to the future. Toodles! Oh. Foreshadowing confirmed.